Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome for joining our service this morning at the Milltown United Methodist Church. Let us have a moment to greet each other to, to the person sitting next to you, uh, saying, God bless you. And thank you for the people who are joining our service online. May God bless your heart wherever you join our service this morning. And as we begin our service, I'm going to invi uh, invite Pastor Barbara to give us an update and um, on, give us an announcement. Good morning and welcome to the United Methodist Church at Milltown. A uh, few things to uh, go over for this week. Uh, our communion offering this month is for the Salvation Army in New Brunswick. Uh, we all know what the Salvation Army does for many people in our own community and throughout the world. So if you have not done so, you would like to still uh, contribute, we have envelopes in the church or you can contribute online. We are going to be having Vacation Bible School starting Monday and we're really, really excited. Um, Vacation Bible School goes through July 19th through the 23rd. At, here at the church and we run from six o'clock to 745 and our theme is Knights of North Castle so we're going to have knights and princesses and dragons and merlins and all kinds of fun medieval type of things um, we would like to thank everybody who's been helping to decorate and get things together um, and those people are Cecilia and Miss Teresa Miss Joyce Miss Jen Melissa Brian Jim Dahlia Amber, Jessica, Christopher, Angeline, and Nicholas. So thank you for decorating. Uh, if you go downstairs and you go into Friendship Hall and through the hallway, you'll see the great decorations that they all did last week. Our VBS mission project is going to be collecting supplies for the Salvation Army for back to school. Uh, so in your bulletins, you'll see the normal things like spiral notebooks, number two pencils, Crayola crayons, pens, pocket file folders, things that we would usually ask for uh, back to school. Um, I hope everyone in youth group saw Miss Randy's email yesterday that we will be rescheduling uh, your get together for pizza in the park. Uh, so please make sure that you see those. Please make sure you get back to Miss Randy about uh, the date that you might be able to come. Um, also, just to let people know, our food pantry is up and running on a needs basis. So if you know anybody who needs food or um, if you are out there listening to us and you need, please contact the office or you can contact me. And we have plenty, uh, we are fully stocked downstairs. And we thank the Boy Scouts for putting together our wonderful new pantry system of shelving. Uh, so everything is nice and organized. If you would like to send Jen Yoakum a um, greeting, she has moved, as you know, to Lebanon, Pennsylvania to be closer to family. You can drop her a card, and her new address is here in the bulletin. Uh, we'd like to welcome George Murray to our church family. He is our new um, landscaper. So it's wonderful to have someone who has worked so hard within our community as a scoutmaster for many, many years and has done things kind of behind the scenes, and now he is officially a part of our church family as our new landscaper. Everything looks great. They were here yesterday, and I'm not sure, did they go to the parsonage yet? Yes, so they've also been at the parsonage and uh, making everything beautiful once again, so thank you so much. And uh, just a couple of prayers. Uh, Michael and Dan will be traveling to Colorado, and they're driving. So uh, prayers for them uh, that they get there safely and back. And also for all this crazy weather, we've been having tornadoes. I think they kind of hit up in Mount Holly and also in Belgium and Germany. Uh, so pray for those families who have lost homes. And those I have a lot of friends in Germany and Belgium, opera singers. Uh, but uh, so far they're safe, but just praying for those people as well. So. Looking forward to seeing all of our, our children on Monday evening. We are having a little uh, get together this afternoon or right after church if you are setting up for a vacation Bible school and we'll see you also then. Thank you and everybody have a great week. Please join me in opening prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we gather here this morning with lives that are filled with activity and movement. 
Lord, we rush from one thing to another as though we are going to run out of time to accomplish everything. Please help us to let go of the hectic times and the stresses and find our rest in you. And relax our spirits and refresh our souls. And remind us that there will always be the things to do, places to go, but that we need the rest of spirit that you provide. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join in our opening hymn, number 500, Spirit of God, Descend Upon My Heart, number 500. Please stand if you are able. Join in the call to worship. Come, give to the Lord your praises and thanksgiving. We come this day grateful for God's wondrous gifts to us. Sing with great enthusiasm of God's mighty power and love. We celebrate that love that frames our lives. It is a wonderful thing to praise God. May God's praise always be in our hearts and in our lives. Amen.
seated. And please join in our unison prayer. God, we are aliens and sojourners in this world, but you invite us to be your guest. You lavishly offer us your hospitality and lovingly welcome us into your family. You invite us to share in the abundance of your kingdom. God, you have shown us that providing hospitality to strangers opens a doorway into the kingdom of God. Remind us that when we offer hospitality to others, we are receiving Christ into our midst and so fulfilling the law of love. We open our hearts to embrace the stranger, the friend, the rich, and the poor. We open our lives to offer a generous heart toward all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. It's time for the children's chat. Uh, let me see your hands where you are sitting. Please raise your hand if you think you are children in this room. <laughs> amen, amen. Just for those who are first time in here, I'm Pastor Dale. And Pastor Josh used to talk that we have wonderful kids and children in this church. And I'm really excited to sharing some gospel words every Sunday with you. And this morning, uh, just, just, uh, um, I have a box of uh, taffy candy. You like the candies? Right? No? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. This is uh, the Sharon, Sharon, who works at the church office, gave me this box of uh, taffy candy this week. So I'm going to leave here. I think I have enough for you to have just at least one. I saw the, you guys raise your hand. So, um, and what do you like aside from the candy? I like also cookies and, and soda. Do you like cookie? Right? So let me ask you a simple question. When you ask a cookie or candy um, to your mom or dad, not grandparents, um, <laughs> Do you always get the same answer when you ask for the candy, cookie? Probably not when you ask your mom, okay? Uh, sometimes the answer may be yes, or other times maybe no. If you ask for a cookie, it's almost time to eat the dinner or lunch, and the answer might be not right now because it will spoil your dinner or lunch, right? You see, your mom wants what is best for you when you ask for something. And when you ask for something, uh, yes, might not be always the best for you, right? And you know what? The same thing goes in our prayer. When you ask God for something and when you pray to God, uh, sometimes you, you, hear the, 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 you hear yes right, right away from God, but other times, you might hear no, right? And often we hear from God and God says, not right now. The reason God doesn't always say yes is that God wants what is best for his children, not what you want. And what we are asking for may not be what is best for us and best for you. But God always wants us to pray, He wants us to keep praying, and He wants us to ask Him for anything and everything that you want and we want, but we must remember that what we want may not always be the best that we need. Amen? But don't be disapp disappointed, don't be discouraged when, you, when your answer is no or not right away, not... Um, uh, not right time, because God is still giving you the best that you need in your life. Amen? Amen. Thank you for listening, and let us move the time for the hymn of illumination. This is a short one so we can remain seated for this. Mm -hmm. 
Number 393, Spirit of the Living God, number 393. Let us move the time of prayers of the people. Let us have a time to lift up those uh, prayers of thanksgiving. Please respond by saying, uh, by saying amen after each prayer. We first give thanks for this time and day that we gather together uh, to worship the Lord and praise the Lord and for the fellowshipping with fellow Christians. Thanks be to God. And we have some individuals um, who are having special days and celebrating special days. Uh, the names are appeared in the back of your bulletin. And thanks be to God. We have church family who are having the, the, uh, the baby, baby in the, in the next uh, couple of uh, weeks. Um, kindly keep the family in your prayer for safety and healthy for both mom and the baby. Thanks be to God. And as uh, Pastor Barbara shared earlier this time, uh, we, thanks, uh, we give thanks to God for the VBS and every teacher and all the students and children. Thanks be to God. Amen. And let us lift and lift the prayers of the petition. Earlier this week, Bishop Shaw of the GNJ uh, called a pray prayer for the people and clergy and laity serving in Haiti and in Cuba. So kindly keep those uh, people who are struggling uh, in their own uh, place. Lord, in your mercy. There are individuals in our church who are recovering from physical illness, mental and spiritual illness. Kindly keep them in your prayer. Lord, in your mercy. We have church family who are having surgery this week. Kindly keep them in your prayer for speedy recovery after the surgery. Lord, in your mercy. We have also friends in our church who are looking for the peace and comfort in their hearts and minds and in their body. Lord, in your mercy, can I keep all those who are fighting against any forms and kinds of addiction in their life? Lord, in your mercy. Also, we have uh, our friends and church family who are fighting against uh, canceling cancel in our church. Uh, kindly keep them in your prayer. Lord, in your mercy. And in prayers, prayers, spoken, unspoken prayers in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Please join me in prayer. Let us pray together. Lord, we have lifted before you this time and this day the names of dear ones for whom we have concern. Lord, we feel helpless to lift their burdens and their sorrows and concerns. Let us turn these concerns over to you, for you are the master healer who restores our souls. Please help us place our trust and our lives in your unending care and love. 
For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And let us continue to pray the prayer uh, that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture reading comes from the second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 through 10 in the New Testament. It's entitled, Paul's Vision and His Thorn. Let me read it for you. I must go on boasting. Although there is nothing to be gained, I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows, was caught up to the paradise and heard inexpressible things, things that no one is permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain, so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say, or because of these surpassingly great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the, with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That's why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. God is good. And all the time, can you try one more time? God is good. And all the time, amen. Yes, it is. Yes, yes. So how are you today? Good? Pretty good? Yeah? May God bless you and your hearts and everyone in here as we worship and listening God's precious and thy word uh, in this time. And also, um, we'd like to bless everyone who are joining our service online, remotely, wherever they are. We are bound together through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you so much for this time that we worshiping together as we receive your words. Open our eyes and hearts and spirits and help us to bring your words into our, into our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today we hear Apostle Paul boasting not about his strengths, not about his career, not about his skills, not about his techniques, not about his accomplishments, but rather Paul boasting about his weaknesses. This is very unusual for, for people like myself 
people usually like to boast about their strengths, what they have, their houses and vehicles and money, to make a strong impression to other people, not through their weaknesses, not through their vulnerabilities. They like to talk about what they have and their strengths. As we all know, Paul is a great man of God, right? He wrote a lot of uh, writings in the New Testament. He's very intellectual. And he had a lot of things to boast. Paul could have bragging the vision and revelations that he received from the Lord, just like he mentions at the beginning of the scripture. He could have shared his amazing and stunning conversion story and his experiences in the heaven to make his ministry more appealing and more uh, attractive to the people. So no one likes to talk about what makes him or her weak and vulnerable. It's very hard to open to share their weaknesses to people. But Paul, in here, in today's scripture, he loved to boast about his weakness and his vulnerability as a way, as a tool, and as a channel to experience God's great love and grace. But Paul does not give us uh, even little detail about his weakness that really bothered him. He just mentioned, he just called it as a thorn in the flesh, in the flesh, in verse 7. We do not have much details about what the thorn is. Some have suggested that it was a type of um, physical illness, and others have said it was a speech, a speech impediment like a stammer, and others believe it was a simply the life of tribulation that he had to endure. Uh, we do not have much information, uh, clear information about what the thorn is. Regardless, Paul asked, do you remember how many times he prayed to God to take it away from, it, from his body? He prayed to God three times, right? He prayed to God three times. Uh, and as I shared at the children's chat, uh, the answer from God was yes or no or something else. I think it's something else, right? But it's, it was not, the, not yes. Uh, he prayed to God three times to take it away, to take the thorn away from him. Three times um, is actually understood not the technical number three times, but the three times is understood as a semantic way of saying over and over and over again. The, the Bible says only three times, but it's actually he prayed to God over and over and over again throughout his lifetime. I think he had, he had been suffering this with, the, with this thorn um, in a very long period of his lifetime. So he prayed to God whenever he had a chance to pray to God to take it away from him. However, in response, God reminded him of a fundamental truth of our faith, and he said in verse 9, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Amen. So Paul prayed to God to take it away, and he answered something else. Not yes, not no, not right away, but God answered him, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness, in your vulnerability. Even a great man like, even a great man of God like Paul, he struggled with being vulnerable, being weak. And I'm sure that that's what we all struggle, that's what we all deal with in our life, right? Um, let me share about 
little bit of my, myself about my own weakness. When I was in the seminary at Drew about 10 years ago in Madison, New Jersey, I also had struggled with my own uh, weakness. In my third year, in my, third year in, the, in my seminary, I had an opportunity to take a chaplaincy program at Overlook Medical Center in Summit, New Jersey. It was about uh, summer uh, 2011, which was uh, 10 years ago to learn and to develop my pastoral caring skill, pastoral skills and techniques and to learn about something. And I also I was told that uh, taking the chaplaincy program might helpful for my ordination process. So I'd like to take some advantage from uh, the program. So I was a chaplain there for about uh, 11 weeks. Uh, for the entire summer as an intensive program, as a full-time. And as a chaplain, I was assigned to the entire uh, surgical unit of the center uh, where patients stay just for about a couple of days before and after the surgery. Then I was, um, my primary role was, uh, was, was to visit the patients and meet the patients, and also meeting the staffs and the family members of the patients, and providing uh, prayers, and listening, and pastoral care. Have you ever visited any patients in hospital center setting where you uh, never met before? Just pray, just offer prayers? No? Yes? Some yes, some haven't, but it's not easy, it's not easy job, no. You never know how difficult it was to knock the doors of, the, um, of each patient and to meet their families and family members who are sometimes not ready to uh, welcome my visits. Some of them were not emotionally or mentally uh, ready to accept my visits. So I was sometimes uh, rejected, which is kind of normal for, for the chaplains. They are always not welcomed by the families and uh, patients. And one night when I was on, on call, I was asked to stay overnight, uh, just provide uh, emergent pastoral care overnight. And I received a urgent call from the nurse in the middle of the night. I think it was a midnight or past midnight. A male patient, uh, patient admitted to the ER, and soon after, he uh, passed away by the sudden heart attack. And when I, when I arrived at the ER and the room, he was lying on the bed in the middle of the room, surrounded by the entire family, including his wife and children, brother and parents. What they were doing was just crying for the huge loss of their loved one. And I just entered the room. So, if you or I, as a chaplain at the time, how would you react? How would you respond? When you enter the room, everyone is so crying, and grieving for the loss of their, their, their father, their child, their brother. What would you say? And how would you respond? It? How would you react? I was like you guys, you know. I was totally blacked out, speechless, and I felt helpless. I grumbled God. Why have sent me here in this difficult and tough situation? I totally had no idea what to do, what to say, uh, how to react. I just felt that I wanted to escape from that moment and situation. Eventually, I, I left the room. 
left the room after I offered you know, prayer. And after I came back, from, came back from the room to my office, um, I started to feel so vulnerable. I started to criticize myself, and I felt that I'm, I, I have failed as a chaplain. I have failed to offer what I'm supposed to offer. I started to criticize myself for being so vulnerable, so weak, and for failing my job and responsibility as a chaplain. And since then, since that night, I became so even discouraged and became more fearful to visit the patients. And I couldn't count how many times I just turned from the doors of uh, the, each patient. I tried to visit the patients as a chaplain, but before the, the knocking the door, I decided to go back to my office. I decided to go back to the chapel um, at the center and try to sit alone, try to find myself being alone and spend time, hours and days there and ask God, Lord, please Take away, take this away from me. Fast for the time to the end of the chaplaincy programs so I can get out of this situation. So I don't be embarrassed, embarrassed anymore. I pray to God more than three times, more than three times. Please take, take this away from me. I wanted to take this chaplain's program, but it's not for me. Take this away from me. And a couple of weeks later, my supervisor, who was a Jewish female rabbi, called me to check on my process. Then she asked me, Dale, how's things going on? Then I try to be open, I try to be honest and truthful to myself and to her, and to her, and I shared my experience from that night, and my experiences, my process since that night. And I share my fears, and my failures, my frustrations and difficulties, my own weakness and my own vulnerability as my frustrations in visiting patients and meeting the family members. After uh, sharing all of my experiences, I still never forget the way and how she responded to me. After listening to all of my stories and emotions and feelings, she did nothing but smiled on her face and she just Teared in her eyes. And she didn't talk much and even single words. And she didn't give any type of advice or solutions or guidelines. But she just showed her emotions, empathy on me, and she offered prayer for me. Even though she didn't say much words, I was able to feel that she talked to my heart, she touched my heart, and she touched my spirit and soul. And after the prayer, after a short moment of pause, she said that, Dale, can your weakness be your strength? Can your strength, can your weakness be your strength? Isn't that what Paul in your New Testament said to you? And she Googled it and um, read uh, the verse 9 and 10 from today's scripture. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power 
may rest on me. That's why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, and in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. I never expected this piece of uh, scriptures from the New Testament would come from Rabbi. But she comforted me and she taught me how to find God's power, God's peace, and God's strength in the moments of difficulties and in the moments of my own weaknesses and vulnerabilities. And most importantly, I was able to see my true self, my true self, how weak and how vulnerable I am. During the entire time of the chaplaincy, I came to know much about myself. I, my intention was to learn the, some skills and techniques and provide some pastoral cares and to the patients, but it was precious time to know about myself, see the true myself, how vulnerable and how weak I am. And I have found the true source and true strength of my life and my ministry, which is God. Amen. And that it just confirmed me that my, the source and strength of my life, my ministry is God who makes his power perfect in my weakness by using my own fears, by using my own frustrations and weakness and vulnerability. God used my fear. God, has, God used my weaknesses to lean more on him and more on the power of the Holy Spirit. I tried to use my own skills and techniques, but God taught me how to uh, depend and rely on His power and strength. But I never felt easy to visit patients even after that moment. Visiting patients, offering prayers and pastoral care is still difficult for me, even still now. But I was able to witness how God works and how God's power becomes perfect when I overcome my own weakness and fear. When I get out of my own comfort zone, I always witness God's moving power. This is how God has been working with me in my ministry, in my life, and in every aspect of my life and ministry using my own weakness, bring my own brokenness to God, and God will transform something for good. So my friends, my brothers and sisters, I must admit that, I must confess that I am still weak, I am still vulnerable, I'm not a perfect in person, I'm not a perfect pastor. And maybe there are multiple thorns in my flesh, in my life, in my spirits and body, as a person, as a pastor. It's never been easy for me being a pastor in the, in the place, in the, in the area where there is no family and relatives. It's never been easy for me ministering with the people who use, who use different languages and cultures and uh, people from the different traditions. For me, I might take longer hours and times then uh, in terms of sermon and worship preparation compared to other uh, colleagues who use English as their first language. And being, a, a, being an introvert, sometimes I found difficulties and challenges as I try to connect with the people, as I try to mingle with the people, because I have to use my consume my energy when I meet the people. And I had to take and move out of my comfort zone almost every single day and moment when I relate to the people, when I continue my ministry. I pray to God for my shortcomings, my limitations, my own thorns. But God told me, God said, 
my grace sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in you. I'm going to use your limitations for the good to share the good news of my story. This does not mean that I have given up to be a better person, but uh, I still try my best to be a better person than yesterday, better person than the last week and last month and last year. But God has been so great. God has been, God has been revealed himself, and he did tremendous things through my beautiful accents, through my shortcomings, through my limitations, through my thorns and weakness and vulnerabilities. In the past, and I'm sure, and I'm certain, and I that I'm com- I am confident that God will do the same in the future here in this church, at the United Methodist Church at Milltown. As I've already had uh, several one-on-one, one-on-one meetings with the leadership of the church, I am so glad and pleased to see God's wonderful plan for this church through their passion, through their hopes for this church, and through their dreams for this church and the community. Their passion and your hopes for this church will complement each other's limitations and shortcomings and weaknesses. And your passion, your hope, will make this church strong enough to spread God's great love and grace to this community. Amen? So, my friends and my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, today at this time, I am so grateful. I am so thankful that I am not a perfect. I am so grateful today that God is perfect in, in this church, in our weaknesses, in our vulnerabilities, and in our limitations, in our difficulties, in our challenges, in our hardships, in our thorns. So I am strong when I am very, very weak. And we are strong when we are very weak and vulnerable because God will use our weakness and brokenness. So as, as, clo- as I close my words, let me ask you a simple question. What, is, what, 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 was, what was your current, what was your perspective of weakness as a Christian, as a child of God? Do you see it as a thorn alone or as a way for God to direct you back to Him? You have probably all carried or you, you probably still carrying some thorns that you don't like, Right? And like Paul and myself, you may ask God to take it away more than three times throughout your entire life, over and over again. Maybe it is some physical illness and sickness. Maybe it is some sin that you struggle with. Maybe it is a family problem. Maybe it's your difficulties and hardships in your relationships. Or maybe it is your personal personality or some form of spiritual suffering. Whichever it is, it has, become, it has been a little pebble in your shoe throughout your life and you pray to God to get rid of it. But let us remember what God says. My grace is sufficient for you. And His power is made perfect in your weakness in your brokenness and your hardships and vulnerability. And let us ask God to give a brand new eyes to see that thorn in your eye, in your, in your flesh, as an instrument and as a channel and as a friendly reminder to witness God's great love and great, His grace in your life. And as you bring your own weakness to God and as you remain humble to God, May God's power remain with you both now and forevermore. And let us all say, Amen. Amen.
At this time, as Pastor Barbara, Barbara leads us the closing hymn, the Give Thanks, I want you uh, to reflect uh, your own weakness, your own brokenness, your own vulnerability, and have a moment to give thanks for that to God. Amen. Just to let you know how this uh, hymn works since we haven't sung it uh, yet, we sing the top section twice, and then we sing this bottom section twice, and then we end with the last line. Some of you may know it. It's, it's a uh, very popular praise hymn. Let us pray. Lord, we give thanks for our weakness and our vulnerability. For your power is made perfect in our thorns, Lord. My brothers and sisters, please know that you are God's beloved people, refreshed and restored, forgiven and healed. Go now into this world confident in the, in the gifts God has given to you. Go to serve God's people, bringing words of peace and hope to all whom you meet. Go in peace both now and forevermore. Amen. Our benediction song is entitled, May You Run and Not Be Weary. Thanks, Barbara.